welcome to sharachandra is academy where your dreams are our mission this is yatharth here and today we are going to discuss about how to analyze a non important looking news so sometimes when we are reading newspaper we just keep skipping news one after other this is because uh, we are in a habit to classify news and uh, just only read a special kind of news we tend to skip some things which eventually come into exam spyq i'll show this as well so we'll first read the news uh, this is the news brain inspired image sensor and we'll then divide it into various other topics and see whether or not upsc has asked them as pyq so let's come to the news first so researchers at the indian institute of science that is iisc in a new study have shown how a brain inspired image sensor so this is the first thing brain inspired image sensor so when we say or talk about brain inspired so humans have not been yet able to understand how brain exactly functions but they are trying to replicate it because the patterns are there and they can replicate the pattern of the brain functioning so this is called neuromorphins we'll read about it later on but let us now come directly to the next important point from this news which is can go beyond the diffraction limit of the light to detect minuscule objects such as cellular components or nanoparticles invisible to current microscopes so these are some points one is light cellular components nanoparticles and current microscopes the novel technique this is not nobel novel or nobel novel you can tell me the difference between them in comment section this is from english comprehension she said what was the nobel prize was this 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 is the novel unique or anything and this is the novel so which combines optical microscopy with the neuromorphic camera neuromorphism is what i talked about replication of the brain function and machine learning algorithms such as these are simply ai artificial intelligence so presents a major step forward in pinpointing is objects smaller than 50 nanometers in size so what is nano nano is 10 to the power minus 9 so that is a nanometer okay talking again about these terms so when we say a meter it is 100 cm so centi is also that means 10 to the power minus 2 so it is deci minus 1 centi minus 2 milli minus 3 micro minus 6 nano minus 9 then pico minus 12 femto minus 15 and eto so this is minus 18 so these are some terms such as decimeter centimeter micrometer millimeter micrometer nanometer so we are talking about the nanometers particles of this range are known as nanometer which are in range of 10 to the power minus 9 meters all right so they are a special topic we will read about them so what we can decipher from this news were the topics such as what is iisc what are image what is light then the diffraction of the light then about the nanoparticles about the microscopes and what is the major step forward from here that is combining the optometry that is optics optics means things that deal with light plus neuromorphism that means replicating the brain like function to create an eye like structure and how these were combined through the ai so this is a major step forward all right so let's see how we can utilize iisc here so iisc is what it is uh, indian institute of science also known as the tata institute it is a public university for scientific research and higher education located in bangalore karnataka it was established in 1909 that means pre independence time with support from jamshed ji tata and maharaja of mysore so there is one more figure associated with it very important historical figure let's see who it is so it is ranked among the most prestigious academic institution and has the highest citation per faculty citation mean research the name of the people who have done some research 
so among all the universities in the world so this is a world level thing that we are talking about so this is the present of this institute let's go to the past so after an accidental meeting between jamshed ji tata and swami vivekananda so here comes the history or historical portion on a ship in 1893 where they were discussing tata's plan of bringing the steel industry into india so tata wrote to vivekananda 5 years later and uh, i will very much recall at this moment your views on the growth of the ascetic spirit in india and i recall these ideas in connection with my scheme of research institute for science for india so this was when the steel industry plus science research begin in india in 1893 1897 so this was the period and it was inception of, of jamshed ji tata vivekanand just a second so this is how you can use it in a mains answer so what happened further so impressed by vivekanand's views on science and leadership abilities tata wanted him to guide his campaign so vivekanand was the one to actually started or be a beacon so vivekanand endorsed the project with enthusiasm and tata with the aim of advancing the scientific research in the country constituted a provisional committee and guess in whom in front of whom it was presented so it presented a draft in front of the lord curzon on 31st december 9, 1898 so these things we are talking even before 1900s so the constitution of the institute was approved by the viceroy lord minto this is the same minto of 1909 the model went to one and the necessary vesting order to enable it to function was signed on 27th may 1909 so early in the 1911 the maharaja of mysore laid the foundation stone of the institute and on 1911 only the first batch of student was also admitted so this can be added in modern history as well so with industrialization began the a vast step in education as well especially in the science factor plus you can attach swami vivekananda with it okay let's come to the next point next topic which was image so what is image what is an image so image comes from a representation you might have also heard the word imagination or imagination so we see image of something that may or may not exist right now so we imagine that it is there so image can be real unreal but it is a representation of something that either does exist or does not exist okay so it can be real and virtual also there are virtual reality vr sets you might have heard about them and uh, metaverse also so these are two topics you can read about from here let's come now to the light so what is light light is a type of em wave so it has both components electro plus magnetic let me displace both properties plus it travels into a straight line so light always travels into a straight line so can light be bent so we'll see how light can be bent it can be bent by gravity you can see black holes they absorb the light even passing through a straight line and the speed of light is constant that is denoted by c it is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second so that's a lot really really fast so it has both wave and particle nature that means this there is a theory dual nature of light so it displays both particle and wave nature its spectrum uh, lies in visible range and that is known as vibgeor that means it displays seven color upon complete diffraction they are violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red so let us talk about its properties they are absorption like it can be absorbed light can be absorbed what does it mean that light can be absorbed it means that it can lose its energy upon striking something and it cannot be let's say transmitted again so it can be completely absorbed or partially absorbed it can be transmitted that means it can be let's say this is an led bulb so it can transmit light reflection means it can be reflected from surfaces then a refraction refraction means the light can be passed through the surface in a different phase than it came or through a different path then diffraction just a second let me raise it 
Okay, so diffraction is let's say a light ray is passing through here and it goes uh, from an aperture and the aperture's slit width is less so it gets diffracted. It breaks down into its components, multiple components. The another property is uh, uh, its intensity is uh, denoted in lumens and lumens is one of the fundamental dimensions also. This you can read in physics, what are dimensions? So it can be focused or dispersed. That means it this dispersed light can be refocused. So it can be refocused. And this is used in microscopes, telescopes and camera etc. Means this function, this property of light that it can be dispersed as well as refocused is used in microscopes and cameras. So this is about the light wave. Let's see the components of a light wave here. So this is lambda. This is wavelength of the light wave. This is magnetic portion of the light wave. This is electric portion and they are at a 90 degree angle to each other. Now this is a two dimensional space where I am teaching. We can only see its length and breadth. We cannot see high, how, how high it goes. So Z axis is invisible here. Only X and Y axis we can see. That's why it is denoted like this. That one is going like this and one is moving like this. So it is 90 degree to each other. All right. Let's move forward coming to diffraction. So what is diffraction? It is the bending of waves as they pass through an opening or around an obstacle. This phenomena. So bending when we said that uh, it travels into a straight line, a straight line. So it is still travels into a straight line. But after a certain point, it changes its path. But it does travel into a straight line again after the change of path also. This phenomena can occur with any type of wave such as light, sound or water waves also. Diffraction occurs because wave is spread out as they move away from their source and when they encounter an object or opening. Achha, you might have seen those laser lights, those uh, 10, 20 rupees one lasers we see like this. And they emit a very focused laser light which we can fall onto various objects. So they don't diffuse as much, but you, if you emit a light from a bulb here, then it will diffuse. So much depends upon the source of the light, sorry, source of the light plus the lens that it passes through. So the amount of bending depends on the size of the obstacle or opening relative to the wavelength of the wave. Okay, so this is not very important for us, just the diffraction is important for us, that what is diffraction? So bending of waves as they pass through an opening or around an obstacle. So for an example, if a beam of light passes through a narrow slit, it will diffract and spread out, creating a pattern of bright and dark fringes on a screen behind the slit. So this is known as the slit experiment or double slit experiment. You can read about it separately, it's a part of... Uh, physics. So when we are reading basic uh, science and tech for the UPSC, these are some things that you must know. The width of the slit and the wavelength of the light determine the spacing or the bending or diffraction eventually. Let us come to the next topic which was a nanoparticle. So nano means their size is nano plus their particles. Nano means in the order of 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So nanoparticles are particles that have a size in the nanometer range, typically ranging from 1 to 100 nanometers in diameter. I hope you already know the difference between radius and diameter. Let's say this is a particle, assume it's circular. Then the difference from the center to the outermost periphery is the radius and twice the radius is the diameter. That this is diameter. So nanoparticles have unique physical and chemical. These all things you must also read in the CSAT portion because math is also coming very hard nowadays. Okay, So nanoparticles have unique physical and chemical properties that differ from their bulk counterparts due to their small size and large surface area to volume ratio. So one of the components, one of the characteristics that is offered to anything when they have a large surface area is their reactivity. If the surface area increases, then reactivity also increases. So this is in this line that one important property of nanoparticles is their high reactivity. Okay, so let's now come to microscopes. 
the most common type of optical microscope is the compound microscope which uses two lenses an objective lens and an eyepiece to magnify the image so again image is coming representation of something so something can be a physical thing let's say this a, this is the physical thing now first we need to form an image of this thing which must look larger than the real object so we'll use a lens to do it and then we can magnify this image further inverted image is then magnified by the eyepiece so this image will be inverted like this all right so the magnification of the image is determined by the focal length of the lenses and can be adjusted by changing the distance between them okay so here i have uh, denoted a microscope this is called objective lens this is known as ocular lens this is the actual object so an image is formed here through this this is the image inverted and real so actual image through the objective lens and then it is seen to the eye so when eye sees it so eye sees the image like this and the objects look bigger like this instead of how small they actually are okay so this is the virtual image magnified the ocular lens this is about the telescope it works on the other hand of this principle so this is a convex lens so light comes from here and bends inside gets focused so this is a focal point and then through the other lens it is diverged and looks little smaller here the objects look smaller than they are and we can see it directly in a telescope okay now coming to the important portion of the video which is our pyq that we read so much but did it actually come into the exam in one way or other so first question is about the light and astronomical distances okay so the question is which one of the following is a reason is a reason it's not talking about the reason why astronomical distances are measured in light years so first of all a light year is a measure of distance light year is not a measure of time but then why combine year with it if it's not related to time so first of all what is a light year so light year is a distance traveled by light in a year okay so it's eventually a measure of the distance so how or why it is a standard denotion or a standard use to calculate the astronomical distances so the first option is distances among stellar bodies do not change so this is untrue first of all just a second okay so it is untrue because uh, the distance between let's say earth and moon does change or earth and sun does change in its orbit its orbit is elliptical okay so this option we can remove okay gravity of small stellar bodies does not change so gravity can change gravity is based on the mass of an object so f g that means force implied by gravity is equal to g constant m1 m2 upon r square so gravity is directly dependent dependent on mass and distance so if the distance changes then gravity will also change that means if distance reduces the gravity will increase so this option can also be worked off third option was light always travels in a straight line so while this is true that light always travels in a straight line it is not the reason that it can be used to uh, measure distances let us see the fourth option is speed of the light is always same so this is our answer because we are talking about the distance so distance is equal to or speed is equal to simple formula just a second let me it is this okay so speed is equal to distance upon time so time is a constant thing it passes same for everyone then if the speed is constant then distance will also be constant so this is what we need that light should travel same distance in the same amount of time so it can be used to measure the distance between stellar bodies let's say this is body a this is b and this is body b at a different time then if the speed of light is same then we can just calculate the time it takes for this light to come from here to here 
and then we can measure the distance between them because the speed is constant okay so the next question was these questions are from upsc prelims only so rainbow is produced when sunlight falls on the drops of rain so this premise is already given it is not asking why or how rainbow forms so which of the following physical phenomena are responsible for this it's not asking again for chemical phenomena physical phenomena it is asking okay so we are talking about optics here again because light is falling on water droplet so water droplet is physical that means if refractive index is more so light coming from the refractive index of one in the atmosphere and here it is coming in water so it can be 1.5 1.2 anything but a different refractive index so what will happen let us see so it's asking that will dispersion take place so yes dispersion to completely will take place because a single light white light is getting dispersed into a rainbow that means it is displaying webgear so yes dispersion is happening so this is true second is refraction so from one medium light is entering the second medium so completely yes refraction will also take place then internal reflection so what is internal reflection if uh, light enters from here then it does not pass completely it just gets reflected to another portion and then comes here so it's called known as reflection internal reflection in a portion let's say in a diamond you see tir that is total internal reflection so this keeps uh, shining at various different light if you pass white light to it you will see many colors of light in a diamond because of the tir that is total internal reflection so as we saw that all the options are correct that means answer will be 1 2 and 3 okay let us move to the next question so with reference to life i recently in the news which of the following statement is correct this was in 2021 prelims so it uses light as a medium for high speed data transmission so li is coming so light can be related to here it is a wireless technology and several times faster than wifi so wifi uses radio waves and lifi uses light waves so light is very very faster than radio first of all so both the options are correct it is faster and it is high speed and it uses light so both one and two are correct here let us see about the lifi so lifi that is light fidelity is a bidirectional wireless system that transmits data via led or infrared light it was first unveiled in 2011 Unlike Wi-Fi, which uses radio frequency, Li-Fi technology only needs a light source with a chip to transmit an internet signal through light waves. So, what is the problem here? Why are we not using it? Because light does not have the capacity to breach the obstacles. Any obstacle comes, and light cannot pass through it. So, it, this is why it can only be used inside a room, only a single room or indoor environment where the transmitter is this and receiver is this. so if you want them to communicate then yes you can communicate through light faster than the wifi okay so let us see in the next question this is also a pyq upsc is very interested in asking about the light so with reference to the visible light communication technology which of the following statements are correct so vlc uses electromagnetic spectrum wavelength 375 to 780 nm so we already read about that light is an em wave plus wavelength is 375 to 780 nm so it the option has changed the fact in a way to confuse us to create some confusion so if we do not know about the light that it is an electromagnetic wave we'll just remove the first option which has to be in the answer vlc is known as long range optical wireless communication so it is not long range as we already saw because in long range it will face some obstacles and in the light cannot pass the obstacles so signal will not be received here and person will be very confused and sad okay so vlc can transmit a large amount of data faster than bluetooth so this is to correct vlc has no electromagnetic interference this is also correct so only second option is incorrect so let's remove the second option 1 2 and 4 only 1 3 and 4 only so two is also gone from here so answer is 1 3 and 4 all right so let us see about it also 
It is a wireless method for enables high speed transmission of data with visible light. It makes use of visible light spectrum, occupies the spectrum from 380 nm to 750 nm. Usually it is 380 to 760. Okay, it enables high speed internet access primarily in the indoor environment. So where it can be used, where emergency situations come such as hospitals. So instead of Wi-Fi, you can use Li-Fi. It works on the principle of intensity modulation of existing solid state lighting infrastructure often provided by light emitting diodes. So it is not that in every room you need to set up a transmitter and a receiver. The intensity will be modulated. Let's say the signal comes from here in this room then from the doorway of this room you receive some signal they can be now intensified to go in the more direction so this is intensity modulation let's say this is the intensity of the wave now you modulate it when it starts falling and you modulate it back to high intensity then it starts falling you modulate it back to high intensity through various different transmitters so the data is transmitted by modulating the intensity of the light given off by a light source and then the signal is received by photodiode device that transforms the data into forms they are readily consumable by end users. So VLC system operate at optical frequencies and emit no EM interference. It can be used in the healthcare services. So interference is not there. Okay. The size of the visible light spectrum which is 10,000 times larger than the entire radio spectrum. So radio spectrum is used by Wi-Fi. It is Li-Fi. So spectrum is bigger. That means more data can be transmitted at once. And light travels at C, that is 3 to 10 to power 8, which is much faster than the 344 meter per second traveled by the radio waves in the air. The nature of light is that it is unable to pass through opaque walls. This is the only problem here. Otherwise, we could have just used light instead of Wi-Fi. So hence, VLCT is used in indoor environment only or short range. Li-Fi stands for light fidelity. It is a fidelity means loyalty. Nothing else. It's fidelity just. So it's a technology under VLCT. It can transmit enormous amounts of data through LEDs. Li-Fi can transmit large amount of data faster than the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The simple problem is the opaqueness of things and light's inability to pass through it. Okay. One more question came regarding nanoparticles. So there is some concern regarding the nanoparticles of some chemical elements that are used by the industry in the manufacturing of various processes. Why? So why are they concerned? It's asking about their chemical elements. So reactivity we saw already. Large surface area, small size. So they can accumulate in the environment, yes. Contaminate water and soil, yes. We already read about contamination and pollution. So contamination is something that comes from outside and it can contaminate. We are not talking about pollution here. Please differentiate. Pollution can be both quantity wise and quality wise. So it can, pollution can be done by anything that is the part of natural system or comes from outside. We are talking about contamination here. Contamination means become part of something that it doesn't actually belong. So it can contaminate, yes. They can enter the food chains. Yes, they can enter the food chains very easily because if they can accumulate inside the environment then they can also enter the food chain third they can trigger the production of free radicals so yes they can trigger the free uh, production of figure radicals because of their high reactivity so all the options are correct so one two three is the answer let us come to the next question which was for the measure or estimation of which of the following satellite images remote sensing data used okay so it's again talking about the images that we read in the first portion so chlorophyll content in the vegetation of a specific location. So green color is emitted here. So this can be imagined or imaged through the data that how much green is there certain region. Greenhouse gas emissions from rice paddies of a specific location. So let's say now it is gaseous and we cannot see the gases. We cannot see CO2 or methane by the bare eyes. So how do we image it then? It does exist, but we need to see it. So in order to see it, we will image it through different sensors, through remote sensing. So this is true. And land surface temperature. So temperature is also something we cannot see, but it exists. So it has to be imaged for us to see it. Now seeing is the important part here. We are able to see through images. Something that we cannot see in general, such as gases and temperatures. So this is the importance of the imagination or imaging.
so for the measurement estimation of which of the following satellite data can be used so yes all three can be seen from satellite and imaged so one two and three is the correct answer here so this is how if you read a news which looks uh, very not important sometimes so rather than skipping it try to see what you can extract out of it and what upsc has previously asked so you should make a pyq database i'll put it on channel and then search the terms which the news carries so this is all about today's lecture thank you very much it is your thoughts signing off i wish you a very good day ahead